The Hints Exam in Vertigo. This video is about who to perform the Hints Exam on, how to perform it, and how to interpret the findings. The Hints Exam is used when a patient presents with many hours or days of ongoing continuous vertigo, nausea and or vomiting, some difficulty walking. Their vertigo gets worse when they change position, such as going from lying to standing, and importantly, you can observe spontaneous nystagmus. Most of these patients will be suffering from vestibular neuritis, a benign cause, but some will be having a stroke. The HINTS exam is used to reliably diagnose vestibular neuritis and thus rule out stroke. There are three components to the HINTS exam, nystagmus, test of vertical skew, and the head impulse test. Nystagmus you observe in primary gaze where they're looking straight ahead, and in lateral gaze where you ask them to look to the left and right. In this normal volunteer, she has no nystagmus. Now, when you ask them to look laterally, they might fixate on your finger if you put it there or something on the wall. So in order to take away fixation, which can suppress the nystagmus seen in vestibular neuritis, you can place a piece of paper between their head and the wall and ask them to look at the wall as if the paper isn't there. That takes away fixation and you might see nystagmus which you wouldn't see without the piece of paper. In this patient with vestibular neuritis, observe his nystagmus. Just look to the left again. And then to the middle. And to the right. Here it is again. When he looks to the left, his nystagmus increases, it's left beating, and there's a rotor, rotatory component towards the left, and it increases when he looks to the left, you can see the torsional component, and when he looks to the right, it lessens, but the fast component is still towards the left. So it's unidirectional nystagmus, it doesn't change direction. In the HINTS exam, this is reassuring. Compare that to this lady, who when she looks to the right, she has small horizontal nystagmus with the fast component to the right. I show this short clip twice, just to see the little right word beating nystagmus, and then when she moves more central and to the left, you can definitely see that her nystagmus is now beating towards the left. So she has direction changing nystagmus or bidirectional nystagmus and that's worrisome in the HINTS exam. The next component of the HINTS exam is the test of skew. You observe this by doing the cover-uncover test. You simply take your hand and place it over the patient's eye and move it to cover the other eye and observe if there's any vertical movement of the eye when it's uncovered. In this patient, observe how when I first take away my hand from his right eye, that the right eye will go medially and upward. And then when I take my hand away from the left eye, it goes immediately and downward. It gets a little less as we go along, but there's definitely some vertical skew deviation which is worrisome in the HINTS exam. Upward and medially, downward and medially, upward again. So this abnormal vertical skew deviation is worrisome in the HINTS exam. The head impulse test is, will be abnormal if you have vestibular neuritis. The head impulse test is looking to see if you have a nerve problem. And if you have a nerve problem, you probably don't have a brain problem. So it's a little counterintuitive in that an abnormal finding is a good finding. In order to perform the head impulse test, hold under their skull, have them look at your nose or the camera, and then move their head back and forth until you're assured that their neck muscles are relaxed. And then in a random fashion, move their head briskly to the midline from maybe 20 degrees out. What you're looking for is an abnormal catch up saccade, which I'll demonstrate shortly after this normal volunteer. So again, holding onto the skull, moving the head 
quick, uh, slowly to relax them and then moving their head briskly to the center and looking for any abnormal movements. Her eyes remain completely fixed on the camera and that's a normal thing, which in a normal person is good. If she had a acute vertigo at lasting hours and days in the stagmas, it would be bad. Here is an abnormal head and pulse test. Notice how this man, initially you can see some nystagmus when he looks to the left, left beating nystagmus. Then when his head is turned to the right, you'll see the catch-up saccade. This is normal, that one. The next one will be the catch-up saccade. Did you see how it, it, there's a larger movement of the eye from the right to the back to the midline? That's an abnormal head and pulse test, which is reassuring in the Hintz exam because you're showing that he has a nerve problem, probably doesn't have a brain problem. Here's another one. Again, when his head is moved to the left this time, sorry, to the right, then you have an abnormal head impulse. This is actually normal, just a few beats of nystagmus. One more time to the right, which is abnormal. There's a catch-up saccade. He almost did it while his head was being turned, but there was an abnormal catch-up saccade. So that's reassuring Hintz exam because he has an abnormal head impulse test. And this lady who we saw earlier with the direction changing nystagmus, she has a rock-solid head and pulse test, which is worrisome because she has acute vertigo and nystagmus, and we can't find a nerve problem. So she probably has a brain problem, which she did. So a reassuring Hintz exam, you have to have all of three components. You have to have unidirectional nystagmus, no vertical skew deviation, and an abnormal head and pulse test. A worrisome hints exam if you have any of the following. Direction changing nystagmus, an abnormal test of skew, or a normal head and pulse test. Just to recap an important point, which patients do you perform the hints exam on? Only patients who are having hours or days of continuous ongoing vertigo and they have spontaneous nystagmus. So here's a last question for you. When do you perform the Hintz exam and the Dix Hall Pike test on the same patient? Well, we just said that the Hintz exam, you have to have hours or days of vertigo and spontaneous nystagmus. In the Dix Hall Pike test, you have only short epi episodes, like 30 seconds of vertigo, which are initiated by head movement. And after 30 seconds, the vertigo goes away and you do not see any spontaneous nystagmus. So the answer to the question posed is never.